All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Tonight, we're gonna to be working on some tumblers and I'm gonna be using a machine that a lot of you had asked me about, and that is gonna be the X-Tool S1 as well as the RA2 Pro uh, Chuck. Now, a lot of this process, guys, if you have a different X-Tool, the process is gonna be a lot similar, but not the same. Uh, the hardware we're using will be different, but I will be doing the job in XCS. And so, you know, any X-Tool product that you have, you can uh, kind of follow along and the settings should be very similar as far as how to set the job up, making sure everything is square and how to use the, the chuck itself. So that's what we're gonna be doing tonight. I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible. Uh, I've been doing some testing. I'm gonna share some uh, results and settings with you as well. And uh, let's, uh, let's get rolling. All right, guys, first thing first, uh, if you're not familiar with the RA2 and you're not familiar with your S1, uh, there's a few things we wanna go over as far as the setup goes. Uh, first off, before you start looking for it and you pull your hair out trying to find it, the plug for the RA2 is right above the light over here on the right side, just behind the power button. It's a little hidden and I had to search some content as far as the manuals to actually find out where it was. They put this little rubber stopper over it to keep dirt out of it, and it does a really good job of camouflaging that plug and uh, making it merely, nearly undetectable. So it's gonna be right here, a couple of inches from the corner, just inside under the light there, or above the light on the side where the power button is. Uh, the cable does have the same connectors as the back. So technically you could plug it in at the back, and I did so until I finally found this guy. But it works either way, just FYI. Secondly, in order to do anything of any significant size, you're definitely gonna to have to have the riser base. As you can see, I have the riser base. The way I'm running mine is a little modified. You'll notice that this is the wooden piece that I have underneath my X-Tool S1. Because of the way that this thing is designed and the way that crumb tray goes in here, it's, it moves, it moves a lot, okay? I did not like that. That is the one thing with X, the X-Tool S1 that I've been having a real problem with is just keeping stuff still. Because when this machine is moving at the speeds that it moves, that crumb tray wants to, it wants to slide around. So we had to, I took that out completely uh, through the, the front of the uh, pass through. And what I have done with my machine is mine is sitting on a piece of wood uh, on top of the tabletop. And I have taken myself some little, uh, brackets made out of some scrap wood and the lights went off on the machine so let me get them back on and i've put me some little brackets in here and i've got some on the back as well to hold the machine so the machine itself cannot move on the table okay and in doing so that allows me to use the tabletop to hold my ra2 steel so i don't have to worry about it moving so i took my old x tool d1 kit that i made i grabbed the uh, ra2 panel out of it and just basically made a square and just stuck me a couple of screws into this board that the machine is kind of secured to using those four corner brackets there. Uh, and what that does is that does not allow the machine or the RA2 to move independent from each other. So if I, even if I try to move my machine, it will not move. And if I try to move the RA2, it will not move. That is key when doing tumblers, guys, especially with this machine. The speeds that this thing runs, if you don't secure everything, uh, that it's go, it's it's gonna move, okay? Because we're talking 500 millimeters a second with this big module slinging back and forth, it creates some movement. So the crumb tray completely went out for me, and with tumblers it works great. Now if you're doing something small and you're using the roller, you may have to put the crumb tray back in and raise it up and just try to secure it with some, I don't know, painters tape or whatever to keep it from rocking. Another note to uh, keep in mind. When you set the uh, RA2 in there, you're going to want the stepper on the right side. It's pretty easy to keep up with because if you can read X-Tool without having to stand on your head, then you should have it correct. Uh, and then just plug it in right here. When you get ready to not do any kind of rotary work anymore, the simplest thing to do, make sure you have the machine powered off when plugging or unplugging the roller or the chuck. I'm going to unplug that guy and I'm going to lift this out. And the way that I'm doing it, all I've got to do now is take my crumb tray, come back around here, and I can drop it back in. 
and put the honeycomb back in and go back to work. But let me show you what I'm talking about with this crumb tray. That's, that's what bothers me with this thing. Even with the door shut, this, this, this can move. So that's the problem that I've been having and this is the solution I've come up with and I'm gonna share it with you guys. So if you're wanting to do tumblers, you could try it the other way, but guys, I recommend going slower. Uh, if you have any chance of any kind of movement or anything slinging around, go slower to try to minimize the risk of that. But with the setup that I have, I've been successfully running 500 millimeters a second, getting some good, nice, clean burns and uh, getting them done kind of quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the chuck back in here. Machine is powered off. Always make sure your machine's powered off. With my little jig system, all it does is sit in the imprint right there where it goes. And then I'm just gonna come up here to the plug, which is kind of hard to see from out here without any lights. Uh, and I'm gonna plug that in. Once that's plugged in, everything's good to go. I'm gonna power the machine back up. The machine's gonna run through the process and uh, we're good to go. So I'm gonna share with you some of the settings that I found so far, and then we're gonna set a job up and go from there. All right, one of the reasons, guys, that I have such emphasis on making sure things stay still is with this machine, it has awesome speed, awesome power. But if you can't hold your material still, and if your material won't stay put, then that awesome speed and awesome power is gonna cause some shifting of your materials, which is gonna cause some oopses, which is gonna cause wasted money. So this is, this is my solution. And since I've done this, it's, it's turning them out quick. The wide work area, if you put the chuck in the middle of the work area, make sure you put it in the center. That way you can have all the room you need for over travel to run speeds to five, 600 millimeters a second. So here's a speed test that I've been doing with the machine. And as you can see, uh, I'm at 100%. I'm actually getting a clean burn on the cup, and I tried to get the light in the background so you can see it as it turns. But I am getting all the way up to 600 millimeters a second at 100% output. I'm, I'm getting a good result. So that's why I wanted everything secure, so I could run those insane speeds. Uh, because what's the use of having 40 watts and insane speed if you can't use it? So that's the way I set it up. But this is an orange tumbler, guys, and uh, orange with diode lasers, of course, it's gonna burn pretty well. So if you're trying to use my settings for a jump off, you probably get away with it because if you look at the settings, anywhere at 100, 100% all the way from 200 millimeters a second all the way up to 600, you still get an acceptable result. So I think the S1 with the 40 watt module, it's gonna be pretty forgiving on tumblers. So, I mean, if you, if you just stick with, you know, on your initial burn, if you got a one off, Somewhere between three and 500, you'll probably be okay until you get into those whites and those lighter colors. Hadn't tested one of those yet, still don't know, but we'll maybe find out in another video. But let's get over to XS, XCS, and I'm gonna show you how I set this up, but also I wanna show you how I did this. And what this is, is I have evenly spaced, or really, really close to evenly spaced, these icons or these logos all the way around the cup so it's you know if you it, it, for those of you that want to say oh it's pro not perfectly spaced it's probably not there is very likely a millimeter or two difference where the the, the first and the last logo are but i can't pick it out by looking at it and i doubt anybody else will be able to either so not going for perfection we're just going for acceptable today but uh, let's move over to XCS and I'll show you the setup process and everything to look for at XCS and how to do this. So let's move to the computer. All right, guys, over at the PC and we're going to go ahead and launch XCS. I'm going to do this from scratch just so that if you're new to XCS or if you just, just got through getting that guy out of the box and you're trying to figure this out, maybe everything will go well for you and you won't have any problems. So if you're gonna be tumble, doing tumblers, guys, one of the first things that you're gonna to need to pay attention to is over here, once you have connected your chuck or roller, you're gonna to have to go from laser flat right here over to laser cylindrical. Now, don't stop here, guys. Take my word for it. Do not use roller if you have the chuck. I did that, and that's where I got my test cut from because it burned backwards. 
Uh, and I couldn't figure out why it burned backwards, but it was because I created another canvas, forgot to change it from roller to chuck, and so I got a reversed image. So <laughs> that is a lesson learned for the Clack Shack. But once you connect, uh, you, you select chuck, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to type up the diameter of your cup. And with your RA2, there came a handy little uh, measuring device, and you can either do the perimeter or you can do the diameter. I tend to do the diameter most of the time, and with these guys, I've already measured them, so we're going to go ahead and cheat, and it is 85 millimeters across the top. Now, the distance, this is your basically your focus, and so in order to set the focus, we're going to need to put the laser over the top of the tumbler and then hit this button. So I'm going to go over and move the laser over, and you'll notice with the S1, this is a like active tracking of where the laser is. So this little red crosshair right here is going to move to where the tumbler is located, and then when I get back, we'll hit the button. So check this out. Now, with the X tool, like I said, we don't have a camera or anything, but we do have that cool crosshair, which, you know, I like my cameras, but this thing's starting to grow on me a little bit. Uh, it is very precise, accurate, and I like the fact that even if the blazer doesn't move on its own free wheel, even if you move it by hand, it maintains tracking where the machine is. So that's really, really cool. So once I made sure that the head is directly over the top of the high surface of my tumbler and that that crosshair is centered, and you kind of want to eyeball that, and kind of line that crosshair up to where it's lined up with the center shaft that comes out of the RA2. Uh, that way you know you're in the absolute center of your workpiece because you don't want to be off to one side or the other. It could cause less than uh, efficient engraving on the coating. So I'm gonna go over here now and I'm just gonna hit this little button, which is going to set the focus. You're gonna see the head do a little bit of a movement because of the pointer offset and the pin location. Then it's going to run over to the corner. It's going to use that little ledge to reset the pin. And it's going to come back out to where the tumbler is. Now, I want to show you guys something. Once you get all of this set up, of course, you're going to know how to, have to put your settings in there and all of that. Uh, one big help with tumblers, guys, and, and this is especially if you're trying to do a wrap or you're trying to put graphics on two sides of a, of a tumbler, go ahead, go up here, insert your rectangle. Uh, you don't, it doesn't matter what size the rectangle is when you bring it in, but what you're going to want to do is when you go over here, this perimeter is 267, okay? Our tumbler, if we had a camera, it would help, but our tumbler sits in here, the bottom's over here, the top's back this way. So basically that 267 is the distance all the way around the tumbler. So if we take this little box right here, and we're going to go up, and I'm going to change the distance of it, unlock that. We'll change the distance of it to 267. Now, basically, if this was a piece of paper, it would be like a label that would stick to the tumbler. So that lets you know how much real estate you have to work with. And depending on the size of your tumbler and whether it has a taper or whether it's flat, you can actually take and you can make it wider or narrower depending on the surface area that you have. Now, let's look at one of the tumblers that I'm using. So this is the tumblers that I'm using. And you can see they do have a slight taper right here. So if you start getting off in here, there is a risk of having some slight uh, distortions or maybe a little ineffectiveness from the laser because of the angle. But so far, guys, as long as I don't get too far down this little, this little arch right here, I haven't seen any issues. But what you would want to do just in case, uh, if you were trying to stay, let's say you were trying to stay between here and where the little roll there starts. What you want to do is get your measurement measuring tape or your ruler or whatever you got and you can measure the distance of that flat area and especially with the measuring tape i don't know if you can see this guys but with the measuring tape it kind of tells you when you hold it up flat against the side it kind of shows you where it starts really tapering because you get that gap so the gap really kind of gets kicked off at about five centimeters uh, but I think we're usable up to about six centimeters. So that's going to be 60 millimeters of work area as far as the height. So let's go down and adjust that on our uh, image here. So on this shape, to kind of give me an idea of where I can engrave, I'm going to want to change this to 60. All right, so now this little area right here basically tells you where your usable engrave area is. And the easy way to do that is 
I'm gonna go over to the machine. I'm gonna move that crosshair right there to the edge. Let me show you what I'm doing. I'm gonna move that crosshair right up to the edge of where the coating meets the unfinished metal right here. And I'm gonna use that to align the box. So that's what I'm gonna do, do, go do. So y'all watch the screen. All right, so right there, guys, this crosshair, the up, upright part of it, is still in the engravable area, but anything this side of that upright is out. So I'm gonna grab this little guy, and I'm gonna drag it over here, and I kinda wanna line it up with that. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be centered because if you look right there, the top of my shape is outside the work area. So I'm gonna pull it down until I get it in the work area. And once it's in the work area, I'm gonna let go of it. So there we are. Now we basically have painted a rectangle and anything that we put in this rectangle, because we've got it 267, uh, as far as the wrap around, it's 267. And as the height, it's 60. So anything I put inside this box is going to be where I want it. So to avoid doing anything too intense uh, and drawing this video out a long time, I'm just going to throw a little shape right here. Uh, we'll do a little tree. So I'm going to take that tree, and I'm going to go over here to my engrave powers. I'm going to go to engrave, and I'm going to go over here. I've already set up my coated tumblers. I've set a speed up. But since I've done this power test, I want to go ahead and uh, move that up to 500 because I do know now that at 100%, I can run 500. I've been running 50 at 300, but let's go ahead and crank it up. So I'm going to run this one at 100% power at 500 millimeters a second. And I'm going to click on my little tree here, and I'm going to rotate it minus 90 degrees. Because, guys, keep in mind, the way the tumbler is oriented in there, the bottom's this way. Okay, you've always got to remember, the bottom's this way. <laughs> minus 90, that's going to be your rotation for most everything you do. So I've got that in there, got the speeds and everything set. I've already set the uh, power. And so we're going to do a little frame. I'm just going to walk over and make sure it goes where I want. Okay, this is why framing is important, guys. Somebody forgot to turn this into ignore, and it was framing the entire shape. So you're gonna wanna do that. Do not do not forget to do that. Make sure you turn that into ignore. I'm so used to using light burn, and that's the color from my tool line, it, it kinda got, got past me. Uh, but you're gonna wanna ignore that. So I'm gonna take this shape right here, I'm gonna move it over to black, and then I'm gonna make sure I got my settings in here for that. So I'm gonna run at 100%, 500. Whoa, what just happened? All right, 100%, 500. And it's on engrave. So we're good on that. Typically the color that I use on this one is the light blue too. But we'll make sure that that one is set to ignore. Yes. So once again, guys, frame again. But always frame. Sometimes it'll save you because even though there was no power hardly on that burn, it would have took a long time. All right, guys, everything looks good on the frame. And so now we are about to send it to the laser. Going to hit the process button. Going to get to see the preview. If we hadn't have caught it earlier in the uh, frame, you would now see that square. And luckily we don't because it's not there anymore. It's set to ignore. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit start on this and uh, kind of move over and try to shoot a little bit of video of the machine doing what it's supposed to do. All right, guys. So uh, here we go. I'm going to hit the button. As with the x 2 s one you have to hit the button to start the job. And you'll see right now, that is why, why I say when you set your chuck up, Set it up in the middle of the workspace because running these crazy speeds, you're gonna have a lot, especially on the left side, you're gonna have a lot of over travel. And if you don't set it up in the middle, then the over travel is gonna get too close to the limits and it's gonna like take some of your speed away. Uh, but we'll let that run for just a second and uh, see what it looks like.
All right guys, so after the tumbler comes off of the machine, if you're new to doing this, don't, don't freak out if it looks like this, okay? <laughs> don't freak out. That is basically just ash and soot on the tumbler. Now, you can take a dry rag and kind of get some of it off, but guys, my go-to has always been and will be rubbing alcohol and a magic eraser. Now, there's hundreds of things you can use to do this. There's bar keepers, there's all these different cleaners, but I mean, let's face it, rubbing alcohol and Dollar General magic erasers, if it works, why spend the extra money? But, you know, feel free to use whatever you want. Spend as much as you want on the cleaning supplies. Uh, but I've always used just plain rubbing alcohol, a rag, and a magic eraser. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. Now, I don't have a sink in here to wash it with water. I usually like to try to wash them with soap and water before showing them. But we're just going to do this one. This is going to, we're going to call this just shop cleaning, which is basically scrub it with a real rubbing alcohol and water and then go back with a little more rubbing alcohol. So once you get that off of there, guys, then you got, you got that. And good burn, especially considering the speeds that we ran. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of lines in it. Uh, and I ran it at 100 on the, uh, the LPI, DPI, whatever they call it in XCS. So there's always room that you could run that up a little higher if you wanted to. Uh, with the S1, if you do want to kind of raise it out of focus a little bit, because uh, sometimes people like to raise it out of focus on tumblers to try to get a little wider beam and kind of do a little overlap to, to limit lines. If lines becomes a problem or if you just want to try it, uh, the way to kind of trick the, uh, the S1 is once you get everything set up, get you a piece of two or three millimeter material, lay it on top of the tumbler before you hit the button and let it touch off of that material. And that's going to add you a couple of millimeters. Uh, I don't know that you can drop or raise the focus on tumblers. Haven't tried that, but that is an option uh, when cutting and stuff. So you could probably go in and, and change the Z-axis maybe as well. But I haven't tried that, so I'm not going to tell you about that method. But you can always just trick the, uh, the little foot there into thinking that the tumbler is taller than what it is. So, But I haven't had to do that. I just run it like this, and I'm getting good enough results for me. So uh, that's... Uh, that's about all of the tips that I have for you on that, guys. Uh, I have done so many tumbler videos, I don't want to overdo it. But when people started asking me about doing tumblers with the S1, I was going to try to see how many videos were out there involving the S1, the RA2, XCS. And to be honest with you, I haven't found one. I found lots for the D1. I found a couple for the uh, P2, for the F1. Couldn't find any for the S1. So I figured you guys, especially the ones that just got it, and some of you may have got it after my recommendations that it was a decent machine and uh, didn't want you out there hanging. So I hope this helps out. If it does, guys, be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe. Uh, you can also go over to Facebook if you're watching from there or if you found me there. Just make sure you're following the page. Try to grow the channel and, uh, you know, kind of help uh, make a little money to help pay for stuff like this. So uh, if you don't mind, check that out. Also, I will be dropping links. These are Hassle Outfitters uh, tumblers that I get from Amazon. I buy them in bulk. And as you can see, I'm gonna be doing a lot of orange ones. So uh, if you're interested in those, I'll drop a link down below as well. The uh, Magic Erasers guys, Dollar General, Walmart, you know, your Walgreens, wherever you buy cleaning supplies should have those. Rubbing alcohol. Same thing, most any place that sells first aid supplies will have some, some rubbing alcohol you can use. Like I said, there's other materials and other cleaners that you can also use that may do a better job. I haven't seen it. Uh, I've always had good enough results using alcohol, so I just stick with what I know. But that's it for tonight, guys. I just wanted to show you, if you have the machine, these are my tips for doing tumblers with the S1. And I will also be dropping links to the machine as well as the rotary down below. So uh, check those out. But till next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.